Okay, welcome to the first session in our World of Xanor Swords and Sorcery game. We have a motley crew consisting of Barrow, a necromancer once apprenticed to the feared and infamous eldritch sorcerer Gul Garak. We have Aegir, an ex-innkeeper who was convinced into taking on a life of adventure by Barrow and has discovered he has a talent for getting into those difficult to find places and emerging unscathed. We have the tall and muscular Guntok, a half-breed Pict who was abandoned when just a babe in the wilderness and was raised by bears. And he spent a good deal of his adult life catching and raising animals for use in pit fights in the, the many violent cities of Xanor. And finally, we have Zonzo, who is of Atlantean heritage. He was a foundling raised by a monastery, follows Langaru, god of the sea, and is on a sort of his, his tradition's version of a walkabout. So we find our adventurers in the state of Lancora. The people of Lancora are, they're a diverse mix of people descended from slaves, sailors, other people from a variety of different cultures. Due to their closeness to the eternal flame, the sun of this world that burns in the endless mountains to the north, the people in the north of Lancor tend towards swarthy skin, dark hair and eyes, whereas those of the south have lighter skin and hair colour. Due to raids from the lands of ice, occasionally a child is born with blonde hair and or blue eyes, something considered a very ill omen. Such children are often killed shortly after birth. The people of Lancor have a sort of strange hodgepodge pantheon of deities they follow, but due to the fact they're very cosmopolitan, they often adopt deities from other cultures, sort of enfolding them into their own myths. We start this adventure in Zanakand, the City of Thieves, also known as the City of a Thousand Delights, where it is rumoured, if rumours are to be believed, that anything is available for a price, whether that price is in gold or whether the price is in blood. And we begin with our heroes standing in one of the many drinking establishments throughout Zanakand. It's a fairly wide expanse inside a large tent. People are lounging around on huge divans, cushions, etc. Many of them have hookah pipes in front of them. The long pipes stretching out from them in clouds of scented tobacco wafting into the air casting a smoky fragranced pall over the entire building as you sort of like look further in you can just about make out the silhouettes of people through the smoke all reclining some of them drinking out of vessels that are on small tables in front of them you can see a, a number of slaves moving between the various tables passing out these drinks under the sternful eye of a, a dark-skinned, bold man who stands at the, the head of the tent, his arms folded over his muscular chest, a slight breeze from outside ruffling the large, voluminous, baggy trousers that he's wearing to cope with the often stifling heat in Zanakand. The eternal flame shines ever brightly above the endless mountains to the north, beating down with relentless fury on Zanakan. It's extremely hot here. Any of you who are unaccustomed to tropical climates will be sweating profusely. Indeed, it seems that as it gets to midday in Zanakan, most people retreat to the shady seclusion of one of these drinking and smoking establishments, realizing that only really slaves and those who have no alternatives work during the hottest part of the day. Most commerce, trading, etc. tends to be done either early in the morning or late in the evening when the ferocious heat of the eternal flame is somewhat lessened. As you all arrive in the area, you can easily see the Tower of Gulgarak, the, the destination that you've set your sights on, that Baru has told you there is a, no doubt, a fortune in arcane items and gold within the tower awaiting the plunder. All of you will have heard rumours as you've moved throughout Zanakand of the alleged atrocities that the evil necromancer Gulgarak committed during the building of his huge tower, the many slaves that died during and since then. However, you're able to pick this up as sort of rumours. Gulgarak himself has not been seen for many years. 
However, many thieves have tried to enter the tower and none of them have yet returned. Taking in some of the scented smoke in order to calm his nerves at the thought of returning to rob his master's inner sanctum, Baru looks around the drinking establishment and eventually decides to seek out his old friend, Ager. So I whisper to Ager uh, and gesture towards the tower with my head and uh, I say, so how, how do you want to do this? Do, obviously we're going to wait until nightfall or... He sits and uh, has a piece of fruit in his hand and takes a bite. Indeed, as you as you actually like reach out your hand, you're sort of like looking around to see if that, you know, what you can grab hold of to eat. A young, fairly beautiful woman with bronze skin, wearing again these flowing white robes, walks over. She's holding a like a clay plate. You can see there's like grapes. There's a all variety of different fruits sort of piled high on it and as she walks forward she lowers her head and holds up this platter to oh, you. he takes a pair and takes a yeah, good bite she, she in turn holds holds the plate out to the rest of you then, then you see uh, Guntok as you're just about to like, reach out or perhaps say something to her you notice that a, a gaze falls on Zonzo and his blue skin that's so sort of almost vaguely like luminous in the the heat <clears throat> haze of the day, and you although she doesn't say anything, you see like her eyes widen, but she remains. I'll I'll take some off her and, uh, and thank her. You, you grab a bunch of grapes. Uh, you thank her, and she she sort of seems a, a little bit confused at that, but so it remains there holding the plate in case any of the rest of you want anything. I'll also I'll eat, I'll eat like some of them and I'll like pass her some under the plate. She, 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 she looks like she, <laughs> she looks almost like horrified as you do that and she sort of makes a gesture to like back your hand away and then she says no, no, no I, I cannot it is forbidden. Oh, not, not even a tip? No, no um, but my, my, my master would punish me most severely. Okay, we don't want that. That'll be your tip then. No punishment. But then, then, then almost her, her sort of curiosity overcoming her, her temerity, she, she she leans in a little bit closer to you and she says, and sort of looks you up and down. Like I say, you see her eyes are quite wide and she says, tell, tell me, stranger, where did you come from? I, 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 came, I, I came through the gate like everyone else. She says, I, 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 I've seen all manner of men pass through 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 Zanakan, but I've never seen anyone like you. Uh, there's an you in concern, slave, and Aiga takes the plate from her and uh, pushes uh, her away. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, pl please forgive me. And she... uh, as she's leaving, I'll kind of whisper to her, uh, my ancestry comes from deeper than here. Oh, I should leave and kind of... Whilst this conversation is going on, the tall, muscular figure of Guntok has been attempting to order some mead from the owners of the drinking establishment, and is disappointed when he finds that not only do they not have mugs and flagons serving their drinks in small potion bottles, but that they only seem to serve a very pungent-smelling spiced wine. Grunting in frustration, he begins returning to the rest of his group. I imagine there's kind of like some small swathy trader who crosses my path in the way and instead of letting him carry on i just kind of like shoulder barge him out of my way and he kind of like stumbles down i give him a growl this rather sort of fat fellow like swathed in these loose flowing clothes and these baggy pants spins around and he says and who are you to push the great zz i'll just kind of like lean in and just be like zz i've never heard of you he sort of like look, looks you up and down and bear in mind he's like if you're like six foot he's like sort of four foot nothing he's quite small but quite fat he's probably small he's probably taller if he like lies on his side but he, he sort of like looks you up and down and like jabs a pudgy finger into your into well probably like your sort of midriff because he can't really reach your chest <laughs> yeah. and and he says he says ah i could tell you what a foreign barbarian who has no doubt not traveled these wide and wondrous lands otherwise you would know the name of zz and he's like, like... <laughs> yeah I was like, why who did you kill he says I, I am. I do not kill people. 
I am I am a prince of trade. Coin is the lifeblood of this land. <laughs> and as he says that, one of the like, the many like, slave women's walking past, he grabs hold of this like big pair and he goes, <laughs> and you see juice running down his fat chin and onto his chest. <laughs> Because he's uh, like, oh. uh, I will just kind of place my hand over his face and just kind of like keep him obscured while I just kind of walk past him and just kind of like try and just ignore him. Even if there is some beration coming from behind me, I'll carry on heading back to the yeah. table. Just, as, like, as you head over, I hate this place. As you head over to your fellow saying, oh, I hate this place, you can still hear the trader like sort of haranguing you and like shouting <laughs> at you from behind. You can hear like a. Yeah. Obviously, this sort of thing's quite normal for this place. Like, a few people are lying down and just sort of like laughing and like carrying on with their drinks, enjoying a smoke. Yeah, I'll just kind of like sit back. I'll turn to, uh, to Bunker as you come by and going. So, uh, having socialising with the locals then? I hate them. They all think because they've sold something, they owe me. The fat merchant Zizi eventually gives up haranguing Guntok and gathering a couple of slave girls to him walks away into the smoke laughing. As he does so, Agar regards the obvious wealth of the trader, gives a nod to Baru and raises a questioning eyebrow. Obviously, Agar, as someone who like keeps their eye on valuables, given your stock in trade, you notice that he's not really carrying a money perch. Obviously, it's quite dangerous to like carry a money perch around you to cut purses, etc. But like most people in the area, you can see Zizi is like wearing his wealth. Like he's got like some gold like Mister T chains around his neck. Ah, he's got like okay. loads of like gold rings on like his pudgy fat fingers. You can see he has like a number of coins, but they're like on like a thong around his neck, like the coins having a hole in the middle of them. Because obviously they're far more difficult to steal that way. So Baru, Ager looks at you, sort of like nods in the direction of this fat, rich fellow, and he's like, hmm? Yeah. So we, we do have some time uh, before the darkness, and <laughs> I, I, my, my, Coins are spent. I'm going to lead in a little bit, so like obviously other people can't hear me. I'm just going to go. Aren't we in so many hours about to try and infiltrate a highly guarded necromantic tower and destroy the master, who's probably quite powerful? Well, hopefully, is that what, is that what we're doing? Yes. Ho hopefully, the the former, and preferably not the latter. <laughs> hmm. I, I don't think we can do the latter, but I'm hopefully just, the former. I'm just thinking, if we've only got several hours to that, do we want to spend that time running around stealing purses? Or... Well, the the fellow seems to be uh, uh, an appreciator of the bodily arts. So uh, I, I kind of like part my um, uh, robe a bit, uh, revealing my... Uh, is is not like he's not like a strong guy such as Guntok and his massive frame over there, <laughs> but um, Baru is is very obviously built for uh, like aesthetic pleasure. So he he is a he, he's beautiful. Yeah, he he is is called the beautiful for a reason. As their conversation continues, the group notices that the muscular bold man who seems to be overseeing the drinking establishment is purposefully striding towards the area that they are sitting in. Baru stands and moves to meet him halfway, whereupon the muscular man says, Greetings, welcome to this to my establishment. You are welcome here. I so reply in, in Lankoran and uh, like bow my head um, oh, in, in so deference I to him. And uh, I'll say, like, uh, pardon me, I, I was I was not aware I, I would have uh, come and gre greet you before. He, he nods and he switches from his slightly halting common speech into Lankoran, which is a very sort of lyrical language, I suppose the nearest modern equivalent would be like Arabic or something similar. Mm -hmm. And he, he speaks to you in Lankoran and says, uh, not at all, I am the host, you are welcome in my establishment is there anything you or your party require food drink women men i'll uh, <laughs> i'll uh turn towards uh 
Ager and the rest, uh, and because uh, there's a fair bit of uh, commotion there, so I'll, I'll just give like hand signs, like, huh? Uh, like, I, I, like, I, I feel like Garth, so I completely understand this. Yep. So I'm I'll mo <laughs> so I'll, I'll I'll motion for like, do we want food or drink or the the pipe? Yeah, I'll just be like, meat. <laughs> I'll, I'll do we need clear heads for maybe tonight's <laughs> event. so I'll, events. Events that have that, nothing to do with anything, uh, barkeep. The, the, the host laughs like a, a deep belly laugh, and then to Baru, still speaking in Lancor, and he says, "Ah, your friend is a is a barbarian. He does not know that we do not serve such such a ridiculous weak drinks in Lancora. We serve only the finest Lancoran wine." made from the grapes grown on the highest hills of our great lands, furnished by the light of the eternal flame, and ripened to perfection. Baru suggests to their host that perhaps his barbarian friend might be happier with a small mug of wine if it were heated and sugar poured into it. The host nods and smiles, summoning a slave girl, Shansi, to meet their needs whilst they're in the establishment. She brings over food, the heated wine, and a vial of the more traditional spiced wine for the others. She then sits down cross-legged near the divans that they are seated on, whilst the owner of the establishment strides off to continue his business, saying that if they need anything else, they merely need to call on him. Uh, all right, uh, good news is uh, we have all this. Uh, we probably it's going it's, it's we will need this uh for for the night and um uh, i'm looking all down a bit confused i'm looking it's like i was looking a little confused <laughs> good talk they don't have the honey drink that you like but i believe and i i point at one of the mugs and like, i believe that they have uh made their best attempt with this and i'll point at like the steaming <laughs> it, it basically points at like this small like steaming bottle which effectively it's got like some very sweet like mulled wine in it yeah um i'll, I'll effectively like just like slap it on the table and then knock it back and be like mm, it's better than this perfume But uh, I I um, like why? almost why? start lecturing him about perfumes because that's the thing <laughs> that I was I was taught when I was a slave. I was like, mm. hmm, okay, fine. <laughs> Barry, why have we got all this? Baru explains that it's either hospitality or they will be expected to pay for it later, and then he his thoughts turn in the direction of the Tower of Gulgarak, the destination of their search. Okay, you would know, Baru, from your previous experiences, that the tower itself is surrounded by an almost like palatially sized garden, like a walled garden with the tower like at the center of it. Mm -hmm. There is like a, a sort of, I suppose like a, a sort of topiary maze that fills the entirety of this garden. And you know that your previous master uh, as a, someone who practices the great and dark arts of sorcery has obviously spent like time like defending his like castle. And from the rumors you've heard, like since he's like not been seen in public, many people have tried to like get in and like rob the rumored fantabulous wealth that's lying within its tower and none of them have been seen again. As they continue to discuss their plans, Baru leans in and casts an appraising guy over the slave girl Shanti, realizing that she's not actually a local woman but appears to hail from the distant Icelands, having pale skin, blonde hair and blue eyes. He presses some of the flatbreads and olives into her hand, saying, Uh, I was a slave once. Uh, I hope that you might also find a different path. And I'll just leave her with the, the food that I've secreted away for her. And uh... she, she, she nods and says, thank you. Baru explains to his fellows that the garden surrounding the tower is but one of the outer defences, a strange structure meant to confuse and bedevil the senses of those seeking to plunder the secrets of his once master. However, Guntok is unimpressed by this. <laughs> He's trying to keep us out with shrubs. 
Watch out for the thorns. The group continue discussing their plans to scale the wall and penetrate the gardens surrounding Golgarak's tower when they are interrupted by a piercing scream from outside. You burst through the flaps of the tent. You can see that there's a, a small crowd of people gathered around what appears to be someone like lying face down, their clothing all sort of like fallen, so it's like covering their face, their arms, etc. And they're just about sort of like lying, unmoving on the ground. All the people that are gathered around are sort of like talking in hushed whispers amongst each other. Like, oh, oh, what, what happened? I, 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 Char- I don't charge know. over, see if we can do anything. Come on, monk. Okay, you charge over to this like figure that's entirely unmoving it's all wrapped up in like the traditional clothing of Lancora so you can't really see any like exposed skin or anything like that and you just hear like people talking amongst them like gossiping about what happens like oh this this crazy man came running down the street screaming and then he just collapsed here one of them says I, 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 I saw his uh, I saw his face as he passed it it, it is um Garul uh, one of one of the the thieves uh, they, they call him the Prince of Thieves. Zonzo pushes through the crowd, which provokes a fresh burst of gossip about the arrival of the blue-skinned stranger, and attempts to flip over the person lying on the ground. However, as he does so and pulls back the robes of the person, it seems as though they've turned entirely to stone, and their faces etched in a look of horror and absolute terror. Yeah. I'll be able to be like, oh, he's been turned to stone. Oh, it's it's witchcraft. He, he he must have been near the tower. I'll kind of throw the hood back over him. Uh, you know, what I mean, like respects kind of thing. Like he was a man. Now he's dead. A statue. I'll put the coat yeah. back over him. The, get, get up and just kind of like start walking through the crowd towards yeah, Baru. That's absolutely fine. Give, given that life's sort of fairly like cheap in Lancor, like most people don't seem bothered about the fact that this guy is dead. They're more just sort of like gossiping about like how he's been turned to stone and like obviously there's some sort of witchcraft going on yeah as Sonto starts to walk back i'll be like did you turn him to stone did i turn him to stone mm. I've, I've never ever had <laughs> shown those powers <laughs> come talk no i did not turn to stone as you're saying this you can hear like the people who are like gossiping great right? the, the atlanteans turned it turned someone to stone <laughs> the, the, the blue skin man, he's, he, he's mastered some form of infernal aquatic devilry. And these are like, it's basically like every, every time you say something, it's like Chinese whispers, yeah. like someone yeah. starts talking about it. Yeah. And by the time you get further down the line, someone's like, and a great sea demon came up out of the waves and turned Garul into stone. Yeah. Just like the tide. Can't stop that gossip now. Baru explains that he's not privy to all of Golgarak's de- sorcerous defences, but this could be a result of them. However, Agar is sceptical about the victim Garor's status as the Prince of Thieves. If, if you are a good thief, you don't advertise that. Are you saying you are Agar, the Prince I'm of Thieves? I'm not saying anything. I'm of just saying it, if... Of course you're not. Prince of oh. would never would. I understand. A group of the Emir's guard, resplendent in their white robes and crimson sashes, arrive and begin to disperse the crowd before taking the petrified man away. Our heroes begin to retire to their own tent on the outskirts of Zanakand, pausing briefly to have a small discussion about the sort of equipment they'll need to penetrate Gulgarak's tower. <laughs> I was like, do I need a knife? As the group return towards their own tent, Agar realises that they are being followed at a distance by the slave girl Shansi from the drinking establishment. He tries to keep it discreet and whispers to his friends to keep going. However, Guntok has also spotted the slave girl and is somewhat less discreet. Is this about the slave girl? What's this about the slave girl? The Trey woman. She's following us. Slave and I'll, just, slave I'll girl. just point at the woman. Oh. Okay, as uh, uh, you point it, as you, as you look, follow his finger, or, uh, yeah. you briefly see Shanti like peering out of my arm of his building, and then she's like, Pfft. Okay. Realizing that all attempts of subtlety have apparently flown out of the window, Agar walks over to Shanti, the slave girl, who reveals that she was touched by Baru's words about a different way of life for slaves and that she dearly wants to return to her home in the Iceland. Agar agrees that she can accompany them. Okay, so, so so you guys are all sat in like these big like bean bags, effectively in, in your tent. When uh, 
Agar comes like walking in, like opening the flap of the tent, ducks his head as he walks in, and you can see how Sean see the slave girl from the drinking establishment with him. She walks in, like I say, her head bowed. Oh, you're like, oh, good, you didn't kill the tray woman. Shauncy tells them that if they can help her return to her home, she will assist them in any way possible. Baru says that if they are successful in penetrating the tower, they will easily have enough money to buy her a boat to return to her home or wherever else she wants to go. But equally likely, they may all be dead come the dawn. She looks at you and she says, uh, the, every day the, the, the life of a, of a slave might be her last. And I'll like, I'll, like, pat the, like, if we have an extra bean bag, then I'll just, like, pat it, like, Here, here's the seat for you. That, that was the correct answer. She sits right. down with her legs crossed under her. A few hours pass, and as the oppressive heat of the Lancoran day begins to subside, people begin, begin emerging from the drinking establishments and going about their businesses of trade, the marketplace ringing with the shouting of various merchants. Agar begins to prepare himself and dress, ready to face the challenges that the evening may bring. Righty, time to dress as a thief. Mm -hmm. I'll put on my leather. Likewise, I will uh, just kind of like start to kind of like do the whole kind of Conan black stripe kind of paint scenario. Yeah, that's his armor. Okay. Yeah. That's all I need. <laughs> I will change my uh, blue baggy pants to black baggy pants with no top of it. <laughs> nice. I love it. <laughs> I just wear blue. I just wear let, let, me put, let me put my, my stealth hero pants on. Yeah, stealth hero <laughs> pants on. Yeah. So big camel pants on. That's all he wears. No top ever. I'll be applying like perfumes and oil. Uh, and uh, I, I guess I'll be I'll be getting my skull bag ready. As they begin to prepare, there is some discussion about whether to bring Shonsi with them on this mission. With Guntok saying that she's missed too many meals to be useful, the discussion continues until Baru says, "The the the only freedom that anyone in her situation can have is is the one that they take for themselves." So. However this turns out, I think it's only right that she, she takes her own freedom. So that Shanti might defend herself, Zonzo gives her one of his daggers, and Agar gives her a very brief lesson in how to use it. With the heat of the day fading, they all travel towards the tower and are soon standing before the giant sandstone wall that surrounds the premises. Walking around it, they find no obvious entrance to the topiary maze beyond, and the distant sounds of Zanakand sound extremely distant, as though people fear to be around the tower. All right, they will find a um, very shadowy place, and um, to make the point of in uh, entry, and um, if Guntog is okay with it. Aga will have him stand with his back to the wall, then up on his shoulders and see if he can reach the top of the wall. Guntok lifts Aga up so that he can climb onto the top of the wall. And as you look over to your right, you can see this maze of topiary, these huge hedges and trees that appear to make this bewildering and almost eldritch pattern of hedges. And at the very centre of it, you see this white sandstone tower, almost like a hand emerging from the ground. Agar lowers down a rope to help Zonzo and Baru. However, Guntok climbs the wall himself with comparative ease. I thought you said you were raised by bears. Not spiders. <laughs> bears climb trees. With everyone atop the wall, Agar begins looking at the topiary maze, trying to find a path through it. It's a little bit strange. You're sort of like looking at it, you're like trying to like follow it with your eyes, almost like you're trying to like solve like a puzzle. But every time you think, oh, I've, I found a path through to the centre here, like you find that your, your way is blocked. And it seems like no matter how sure you are, they're like, oh, this must be the path through. There's always like a, a hedge blocking you. But as you're looking around, you do notice that dotted throughout this maze of hedges are various statues of different people, most of them of Lancoran ancestry, but there's some others dotted in. And they all appear to be frozen in poses of abject horror and terror. <laughs> but you see people like... Pharaoh, uh, <clears throat> he whispers, 
I don't think we need should go into that maze. So it, the, the garden encircles the tower from every direction. So unless we want to go back and get some shovels and start digging for a very long time. Dropping down into the garden, Guntop begins examining the myriad array of different tracks in the sandy earth. Then one set of tracks, almost like those made by a large slithering serpent, catch his eye. <laughs> I'll just be like, pretty boy. Why would there be a snake in here? A big one. Uh, well, do you, do you imagine that it... Well, it, it, it must have been alive, to be sure. To have left something for you to look at, so... It's... Probably a guardian? Okay. Guntog, what, what would you put a large snake in a place that you were defending? Eat people. Well, there's your answer. The heroes wander around the statue-filled maze for what seems like days following a myriad of bewildering tracks, stopping occasionally to rest and eat rations. But it soon becomes clear that some devilry is at play and either the maze is changing or somehow befuddling and confusing their sense of directions. After what seems like many days of travel, Guntok eventually gives in to his frustration and hammers at one of the large shrubs with his huge staff. Okay, so you batter this hedge with your spiked staff, so like hammering away at this hedge. You don't appear to like damage it massively, but like some some leaves and a few like little like twigs and that sort of fall to the ground as you're like. <laughs> I'll, I'll just kind of like keep smashing it until I'm just kind of like a bit puffed out, and then just stand and look at everyone else. Okay, that's absolutely fine. What's your dexterity? Okay, roll me a d6. You need to get out one or a two. Oh. Ow, my finger. Okay, as he's hammering away at this this bush next to him, one of the, the small twigs with a thorn on it so flies past his face and it goes and scores a shallow line of crimson across your, your right cheek, Guntok, causing you one hit point of damage. Okay, uh, Guntok, if you can please make me a death saving throw. No! <laughs> and where is that, day, uh, John? Oh, death, there we go. <laughs> death, there we go. It's death. Right, guys. <laughs> good, good luck, Rob. Way! Yay! It's green. I'm so glad. I'm the word's green. green. Okay, for a few moments, you feel incredibly woozy. Your vision seems to swim in front of you and darken, but you... You feel a cold sweat breaking out on your forehead. The refugee like sways a little bit and like dr drops to one knee, putting a hand to the floor to steady himself. His spiked staff falling to the floor with a loud clatter that echoes through the maze. But you sort of like, grit your teeth, gun talk, and then the momentary weakness passes, and you're able to stand once more. <laughs> I'll just be like, uh, maybe not do that again. Don't cut yourself. The heroes push on into the maze for many more hours, until eventually Zonzo is able to locate an area that seems to open up into a small wooded pavilion. They can hear the soft sound of a woman singing and a harp playing from just behind a felled tree. Okay, f for your benefit, uh, Agar, the, the sound of singing appears to be coming from behind this fallen tree here. Okay. I'm gonna do the whole uh, ear thing if, uh, for those who are, uh, yeah. are willing to go into the eager salon. Of, uh, I'll put my ear wax. I'll sort of put my wax in my ears. <laughs> the ear salon. Yeah. 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 Like you just stepped out of an ear salon. Yeah. <laughs> Check out my ears. So shiny. Yeah. So know. fresh and so clean, clean. <laughs> so. Um, I suggest I sneak in. So yeah, I'll, I'll sneak in with Aegon. 
and one of us is going to try to talk to this woman and add any sign of shenanigans, the rest of us is just going to jump her, okay? I'll, I'll try and tell it to her. So okay, just to point out, guys, I've not added all the statues onto the maps because it'd be too cluttered. But like yeah. I said, there's these horrific statues of these people frozen in like, abject horror, sort of everywhere, like dotted yeah, around. That, that's what's scary. <laughs> Are we good, Barrow? <coughs> oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Talk mm -hmm. then kill. Yeah, I, I I can I can try and talk. I will attempt to move quietly into the opening while still maintaining, so I can see I have my my friends with me this time. So once I have confirmed they are with me, I will sneak on, so we don't get lost from each other, or rather, I get lost from the rest. Okay, John. That's absolutely fine. Make, make your yep. move silently roll. Let me know if you succeed. Yay! I didn't. <laughs> I rolled what I shouldn't roll. Okay, so you sort of like sneak around sort of like here and you go, and you're just sort of about to move a little bit closer when you tread on a small twig and there's a loud... <coughs> and you hear the soft woman's voice from behind the fallen tree say, Who's there? It is I. I reply <laughs> in in a ha ha in a, in a um, am I not fairly... beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> Are you not entertained? <laughs> um, it, it is I, Baru the Beautiful. Uh, come home at last. The the woman's voice from behind the fallen tree says. It's so rare I get visitors in my garden. As she says that in such a suspicious manner, um, <laughs> I am going to uh, hide and move silently and start heading the other way round the tree. Can't make you move silently roll, let me know if you succeed. I have move silently as a class ability. And I can just do it as long as I'm lightly armoured. Sweet. Okay, move yourself on the map to where you want to go to. Nice. Is, is there meant to be like, a token on the map for monsters right now? Because I can't see anything. Nope. Oh, I can't see it yet, I suppose. So. Oh, I can't see anything right now. All, all you know is the woman's voice came from here. Right. Someone puts a, 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 count, a counter of a lovely harp playing lady or a giant snake monster. <laughs> would oh, be sick. tipped either way. Okay, na now you're a bit closer, Guntog. You can hear the harp, and through the branches of the fallen tree, you can just about make out what appears to be a a, a woman, again, all covered in like these flowing robes, veil, etc. She's she see she sat down amidst this this fallen tree you can just see like the, the upper half of her body and her head low she has a, a harp in her hands and she's like Bring. hmm and you say she's got a veil yep like a lot of like a lot of people have mm -hmm. um i'll go back to Baru. feel free to move like... yourself mm -hmm. okay. i'll just Go back and like. It is a lady playing a harp. Should we kill her? Well, she did not recognize me, so either she is new or. I could catch her. I have a lasso. And I'll I'll open my robe a little bit, and you can see uh, I have one of my own. Nice. I'd be like, we both could try. If one of us misses, not a problem. I don't miss. <laughs> uh, I, I can distract her and you can go around. I guess if we capture her, we can force her to tell her to get out, her to get through this place. <laughs> I'll point at you and be like, hmm. So, uh, I guess you're not coming up with a stupid idea there, even though it sounds it. Anyway, let's... You Either way this goes... Around the bottom. She she was bound to have supplies, and I think eventually we're gonna need some of those. So yeah. But if if she is just a, a player captured in this maze, we don't need to do anything to her aside from take the supplies. Good talk. Make me a tracking roll. What are we gonna kill her? 
No, if we can avoid it. Yeah, we're going to try and capture her and force her to tell her to get the fuck out or into here. How to get through this place. Okay, as the situation is going on, obviously you've been keeping an eye out for tracks all the time you've been walking in this maze. You look down and you notice that the large serpentine tracks appear to lead directly to where this woman is. I'll just be like, I'll st like look at the ground while we're in the middle of this conversation and we're like, <laughs> she has the snake as a pet. It's with her. What? <laughs> did you see the snake? The tracks. But you, did you see the snake? But there are tracks. I'll dig into my backpack and fish out the skull. Okay. And uh, I'll bite my thumb and paint powerful and uh, eldritch. eldritch signs on the skull. Okay, so, so you're like, oh, she has a, a, a snake as a pet. And Baru's like, gets a skull out of that. <laughs> Not for me. This is my friend Wilson. <laughs> rah, rah, rah. <laughs> I am a pet also. Um... The soft voice of the woman says, "Why don't you come and sit with me in the shade of this tree and rest for a while?" But we we can't see her, and no. so we only. Right, I'll I'll point at the canopy end of the tree and then hide and move silently round to this end. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm gonna try to. Do you want me to go in there and like try and coax this thing out so you can actually attack it? Yeah, go with the barrel. And I'm gonna go the other way of gun talk and uh, sneaky sneaky. If. Okay, move yourself That's... where you wanna be. Uh... Okay, so, I need to, uh, the, so if I so it's over this way, we can hear it, isn't it? Yep. Up here. So the harper is what here? Yep. Yeah, that's what. So sat them in amongst the foliage of the fallen tree. Cool. So I'll I'll go around with uh, Zonzo. Okay, so Zonzo and Baru, as you start moving around the tree, you can see like yeah. the the upper body of this woman. I say long flowing robes, veil over her face playing this harp, she appears to be sat amidst the foliage of this fallen tree. Her head down as she's like... Hi, Black. Hello? Can you, um... help us get out of here? Or through here? As you're, you're saying that, Zonzo, she says, uh, well, yes, of course I, I can help you. If, you. if you're lost, I can... I can end your suffering in this maze. Please step a little closer. I'm a, I'm a chuck the skull at her. <laughs> I'm like, no. Okay, <laughs> that's fine. What, what what does a skull do? Get a voice. It, it's 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 an exploding skull. It's a hand uh, grenade. And it uh, upon contact uh, when I toss it, uh, it, it explodes with uh, basically power from. The afterlife. You need uh, the D20 score needed is 11. So 11 plus on a D20. Yep. Uh, 12. Okay, not a problem. You have landed it dead on, so roll your damage. Cool. Uh, I will. I set this up actually in, in the thing here. So it's in my missile weapons. So I'll. I'll roll it, and it should roll the damage for me. 16. Of necrotic uh, death energy as the skull shatters and this, like, burst of green uh, underworld fire uh, explodes into every direction from it. Okay. Holy cow. 5d6. So that's what yep. you guys see. You see this, like, explosion of underworld energy. There's an almost, like hissing growl from the direction where it landed and where this fire burst out and this woman bursts out from the trees as she does so you can see her her like robes are burning away and as she bursts out from the trees you can see that although her upper half is that of a beautiful woman her lower body is that of a large serpent 
although she looks incredibly beautiful around her face her hair is a mass of writhing hissing spitting snakes now Baru and Zonzo you can both see this creature at the minute yeah. so as I said earlier about there being potential like insta death situations here mm -hmm. in this game <laughs> that's why I wanted to get the skull out before I die you, you, any mirrors. N neither of you, neither <laughs> of you specified you like averting eye contact so you both need to make a transformation save however what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow you to make, since um, effectively you probably would have looked away as I was a blast of fire, I'm going to allow you to make it twice and then choose the best result. Death advantage. That's right. That's all right so Baru, is. if you want to go first, make a yep. petrification yep. save, sorry, transformation save. Yep, so here goes first. Success. So that's you, fine. You grand there. So Baru, as the as the, the explosion goes off, you sort of like obviously knew what was going to happen, and you've like shielded your face, so you've not seen this creature, although well, you've heard the sibilant hissing from it. Okay, Zonzo, you need to make a transformation save. It'll be on your character sheet. Okay. Uh, so in the saves, I don't think I get any extras, do I? Yeah. Okay, so you had also had the look to like look away as this explosion went off but you can hear the hissing of this creature that is quite near to you now Zonzo okay and at this point I'm, I'm going to ask you faces. which of you guys is rolling initiative for your group feel free to pick any you want uh, I would say Zonzo cause, just because he's like the first okay Zonzo roll me a d6 got that set up luckily is six good? It's the number of the devil, so yeah. Well, okay, okay, so yeah. you guys will be going first. So, so first of all, as I've said... So fisticuffs first, isn't it? Yeah. It is. I've, I've lost the page on that because I was looking for something else. So fists, uh, ranged, and then uh, spells? Spells, yeah. So you can do like half your move, then fists, then ranged, then spells. So, any of you guys who wish to move, you can move half your movement. Each square is five feet. Well, I want to get behind this creature, so I'm not looking directly in its snaky fist. And then punch in the back of the head. Okay, so, I like I say, you all, you all get to do half your move first, so I'll all take your mm -hmm. half move, oh. if, you, if you wish to. Um, uh, oh. how, what do these squares equate to? Uh, Measure tool. Five feet. Yeah. I can eat, I can reach in over there. Yep. Movement. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna book a room with the juicer. Okay, so now the the NPCs get to move. She slithers around you with startling rapidity, Zonzo, so like you're facing her. As you're trying to like avoid a gaze, she's like, I'll see what you're trying to do, and like slithers yeah. around you to, to sure. be in front of you. Okay, so we next go on to attacks. So anyone who was in range and wishes to do like a melee attack, mm -hmm. go for that. Punch priest. How's that? How do we do it? How do I do attack with this is there a thing to roll on the character or do just put in the dice? It's it's uh, there there's a space for your melee attacks and your range that actually you can input the uh, uh, relevant information. Right, well, there. I've got the uh, empty. Oh, well, I've got the bandage, the metal bandages, which I cannot pronounce that thing. So but it's basically just the so it's it's a D twenty, mm -hmm. and it's a uh, it's the good old taco. Mm -hmm. So what well, I'm rolling D twenty for the hit, am I? Yep. Right. So, twenty. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, there we go. I'll get an actual 20 on that. Okay, so roll your damage. Right, so it says on the weapon it's 1d6 plus 5. Okay. I've got the empty hands and the extra. Go for one. it. One, two, one, two, six. So 1d6, so that's 5, 6, 8. And do you, are, are you strong? Uh, My. Strength is 11, a deck is 14. Yeah, I know. No. Okay, so you still land a very 
damaging blow on this snake-like woman. So describe how your attack goes down. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be trying out to avoid my eye contact. So I'm going to do kind of like cartwheel blows and trying to like do some like capoeira kind of style kicking, using my feet to kick her into her face and knock her back kind of thing. And, it, and indeed, that is what happens. The, the creature writhes backwards, sort of hissing out of its human-like mouth, and the snakes on its head also hissing. Okay, Baru, do you want to make any form of... Obviously, no one else is in melee range, so I'm going to go on to the creature doing its melee attacks. Obviously, Zonzo is the only one within range. Hello. <laughs> Hi. I'll be your meal for today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Just give me a moment, guys. We'll be serving me. We'll be serving fish today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, what's your AC, Zonzo? Uh it's good. Play that. It's good. <laughs> <laughs> that this isn't fate. God damn it. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's amazing. Uh I got melee free, missile free, BR free. Okay, you've got AC3. Okay. So... Is that what they have to roll over or something? How does that work? The free? I, I, I won't go into explaining it yeah. now, but I can explain it afterwards if you want. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so in order to hit you, I need 13 or higher on a D20. Right. So with its first attack, hits. Oh. Second attack, misses. Third attack. Hits. Oh, yes. Yes. Okay, so this creature sort of hacks at you with two of its hands, and as you do, you can see its nails are extremely sharp. One of its swings misses you, the other, however, scrapes you for two hit points of damage, and then it lunges forward on its sinuous coils. The mouth of the woman opens, revealing razor-sharp teeth that sink into your neck, causing you three hit points of damage. So you've taken five hit points of damage altogether. Oh. And now this thing is, like, latched onto your neck. I'm into my teens. I feel like I'm in my teens with, with some woman latched onto my neck with me a hickey. And as it's doing so, you can feel like it's sinuous snake-like coils are trying to wrap around you, almost boa constrictor style. Okay, we go on to ranged attacks. Is anyone making a ranged attack? Yes, please. Please, please do. Go on then, go on top. <laughs> Indeed. Um, right, effectively, I imagine like the, the, the explosion went off and I was like, oh, we're not lassoing anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, this isn't Kansas anymore. <laughs> lasso is off. Lasso is off. I think it's a safe That's battle. Lasso is off the menu. Yeah, indeed. Um, so I will get my short bow out, and I'm going to take a couple of shots at her. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that'll do it. Just describe how you finish this creature off. <laughs> um, I imagine I just kind of like see that Zonzo is in serious brown town danger <laughs> kind of yeah. like run up and I'm just like <laughs> and just like fire a couple of shots like into the back of her bonds and she just kind of like slumps over onto Zonzo yeah and, and I'm like that's what happens <laughs> you, you spend a couple of minutes like pulling yourself free of yeah. the coils of this creature I'm like, oof, that is not a way I wanted to see myself going. Thanks, Don Gun Top. Mm, it's fine. I'll just kind of like try and retrieve my arrows if possible, John. Yeah, that's fine. That, that I'll, I'll, be, I'll be right there with you. I'm like, would it, would it be a, a, a terrible inconvenience if you just like cut here and I motion towards like the neck? <laughs> um, I'll just be like, knife. And I'll, <laughs> I'll turn to our um, fifth member, um, our newest member, and it's like knife. Because <laughs> she had a dagger, right? She, 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 she obviously looks like she's like scared shit. That's what we're shaking mm -hmm. hands. She hands you the dagger. Yep. Okay. And I'll hand the dagger to Gonsuck. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm assuming the snakes in the hair have stopped moving. Nope. <laughs> I will stamp on them until they stop moving. Stop moving. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, no problems. Now, obviously, in order to like cut its head off and to like stamp in its head, you're actually gonna have to like see its head. Um, well, I'm assuming it fell face forwards. It's lying on its side. Okay. Um, I'll just kind of like, yeah, stamp on its head. No one said anything to me otherwise. I'm gonna move away while he's doing that dangerous thing and look away. <laughs> okay. Make, make me a, a transformation save. <laughs> this may end very badly for you, Gunther. It is, Johannes. Don't no. talk. <laughs> I mean, you have 16 wisdom. You could just say, I think that sounds like a very bad idea considering <laughs> the statues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. to be fair, that, that is a fair point. You have got a lot of wicked eye wisdom. You have. That's why I'm not an idiot. <laughs> yeah. Eye uh, it's, wisdom. It's more the factor of, like, never really experiencing something like that if you say that i that i would have that kind of like i, I think it's fair it's a fairly safe bet that like you'd be a bit wary given that this thing's obviously been turning falls into stone okay well in in that case on oh, this next one can, can we say that i have rolled it onto its front like just kind of like not looking and just kind of like rolling it in my shoe absolutely fine okay <laughs> <Woo. Woo. laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of gun tuck story <laughs> i made a fine statue uh, um, okay, so I'll roll it onto I mean, the front, stamp on some of the snakes, yep. uh, until I have enough to like hold, and then just kind of like saw. Yeah, uh, you you slice its head off. It takes a bit of doing, but um, and I will just kind of like lay it face put, down. Put it in a bag. Uh, ne- no, I'll, I'll lay it face down in front of Peru. <laughs> yeah, absolutely fine. And yep. can I skin uh, the snake body? Yeah. I'll, Quite easily. Yeah, I'll, I'll get myself some snake skins as well. If you can get some nice new boots. <laughs> nice. Yep. Gunter's going to come up, check out my boots. <laughs> no pointy boots on Gunter. Uh, snake skin killed. I, I will harvest the head. <laughs> yeah, the, the head's like lying on the floor where Gunter has put it like face down. Occasionally a couple of the snakes are like... Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll get my uh, specifically said in the book, heavy cloth cloak I'll, <laughs> I'll get that and uh like make a bag <laughs> out of it that's fine for the head yep and in the backpack it goes no worries uh, I, I will go over to him i mean he just put it in a bag right he didn't cut it and boil it and all that shit no no uh, it's, it's it's still like we don't have i don't have my <laughs> like <laughs> camping kit out <laughs> your neck commencing yeah. kit say uh, let's look around this place, see if there's any way... Um... Would it be possible for us to use that at we- as a weapon, you think? Well, yeah, uh, that's that was my idea. We well, might run into your master and... Uh... Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll have a look, I'm going to look, look around John for like any other secret exits or anything. Or okay, to... you're looking around, you don't really find any signs of like a secret exit. Zonza. However, as you're sort of like looking at like the area in the tree where the this creature was sitting previously, you can just about see what appears to be like a metallic glinting through the the, the sort of underbrush layer of the, the fallen tree. Oh, I'll have a look. I'll peer in. Start moving the I brush think you sort of like move, and obviously this this is like a tree, so it doesn't really have any like thorns on it. Yeah. As you're sort of like moving it aside, you see what appears to be a large pile of coins and gems that the the creature must have had like been sort of like sat on with like its tail curled around. All right. I'm like, oh, fair fortune, uh, fortune has uh, fallen on us, guys. Got some coins here. Was like pulling out these like what was it like a little case or something or is it just littered everywhere? It's just like a, a big pile of like coins. Yeah. As you start, I, I, I toss him a sack. Great, take it up. I start putting it in me in me backpack. Okay, it's it, it just like putting it in this like, bag that Agar's tossed you. You think that there's like a huge pile of like gold coins. There's like five thousand five hundred gold coins here. And as you're sort of like you're moving like into the tree, sort of deeper, like finding more stuff as you're looking, you also find 400 electrum coins, a sort of like shining metal, and beyond that is what appears to be a small pile of blue zircon gems. Sounds like a lot. Wow. 
can yeah. can we even have that in a large sack? Yeah, I'll, I'll just be kind of like looking at Baru and just be like, "What did we want from the tower?" Oh, <laughs> at this point, anything that we can carry out. Okay, quick, quickly looking over, like, like I say, there's there's these five thousand five hundred gold pieces, four hundred electron pieces. There's about twenty of these blue zircon gems. Now, a guy, you reckon like each of those has got to be worth like a cool like thirty gold pieces, easy? We just, we just start get, trying to get this out. And as you're sort of like moving this pile and like trying to work out what you can put in the sacks, you like move the coins and the gems out of the way. And underneath the pile of gems is what appears to be a dark black wooden stick about yay long with a small crow's skull affixed to the end of it. Well, I'll pull that out and get that to Baru. Probably. Okay, he hands it over to you. It, it looks to be a wand, Baru. Mm hmm. I will handle it with care. <laughs> uh, right. So, uh, what do we what do we do? Uh, the, there's a an awful lot of coin there to carry around. Taking only what they can carry, the heroes push on further into the maze, and after many more hours of travel, eventually they arrive at the foot of Gulgarak's tower, a huge imposing wooden door with metal supports stands in front of them, barring entrance. Agar moves up to it and prepares to exercise the skills of his trade. I'll listen, I'll... I guess, check for traps? Okay, that's, that's fine. Make, make your roll to check for traps. You know all that good stuff? Mm-hmm. If there are any traps, I should find them. Okay, there don't appear to be any traps on the door. It just appears like a really, really strong reinforced door. You, now right. you're looking at it, you can't actually see like a keyhole or anything on it. It's just like a big, strong like oak door with metal reinforcements across it. Okay, chances are I can't hear anything to it, right? Since it's so thick. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Any um, pointers, Baru? I mean, do we just push and hope it opens? <laughs> it, yeah, Have yes. we tried knocking? And say what? We're here to rub you. Please stand still while the rubbing can take place. We have Baru here. It used to be his old apprentice. He's come to say hi. He come to, and then we start killing him. Uh, I don't know. I mean, feeling knocking feels really, you know, wrong. Just push. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to push the door. Open. That's never been done before. That's absolutely fine. So you're trying to like push over. This is going to be an extraordinary feat of strength because it's a huge, like, oak reinforced door. So what's your strength score? Um, can I just push the feet of strength button? I have a button for it. Oh, let's have a look. Uh, is that a new character sheet? Yeah. And... It does the test of strength and a feet of strength. Uh, I believe it will be a feet of strength, so give that a try. Alrighty. See if it works. No, sorry, it's not a feat of strength. Um, try the other one, see if that works. But that, that was a test of strength. All right, so okay, I... no, it's not a test of strength, it's a feat of strength, sorry. All right. Uh, no. Okay, you push on this door and it stubbornly resists your attempt to open it. It doesn't even like move. You're like, good talk. <clears throat> um, yeah, I'll just run and uh, boot the door. Okay, mate, roll your feet of strength. <laughs> Almost. That, that that was a test of strength. It's a feat of strength. You need to roll. Oh. Okay, oh. yeah, you run up, kick the door, and, like, bounce off it. Um, Does it pull? <laughs> that pull. So but there's no, nothing to pull. Okay, oh. John, because I've done it so nonchalantly, oh, can yeah. I just kind of, like, get up, dust myself off, look kind of, like, more determined and annoyed and take, a, like, a proper... Well, let's, let's try it together. Mm-hmm. 
All right. I, 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 I'll tell you what, since you're assisting, I'll let Guntok make a another feat of strength, but you can roll it twice and like choose the best result. Because like, the others are helping you. You're all like, charging it as one. Okay. So, first one. Oh, second one. Wow! Okay, you all charge into the door. Like, Boom! Wow. Uh, is that... Yeah, no, I'm just... Yep, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems yep. that strangely enough, like a, a reclusive necromancer who like, has a tower full of riches, like built himself a really strong door to protect that shit. There he is. Yeah, like, you, you you froze at it's strange. Yeah. Oh yeah, it, it's strange, but uh, apparently like a reclusive necromancer like has loads of valuable shit, built a really strong door to like protect it and stop yeah, people robbing it. God Funny damn these baddies getting all ready. Uh, John, going around the the tower, uh, looking for uh, secret uh, tiles to press or things of that nature, hidden things. Okay, have you got any sort of role you can make for that? Not built into the character, no. Okay. I can look. You, you have a look around the tower. You don't find any signs of like secret entrances or anything like that. Can I see any windows or holes further up? Nope. It just appears to be like a smooth exterior wall heading upwards. Can I do my um, lock file secret doors? Yep. Things. Make your own. Um, I just noticed in my thieving kit I have a pry bar. A wand. Okay, Diego, you. Sorry, Diego. Zonzo, you look around and you. Ah. Do... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Game slip. You, you look around, Zonzo, you don't find any sign of secret doors. Okay. Uh, I'm going to try with my pry, pry bar. Okay, I'll let, you I'll let you make another extraordinary feat of strength. Since you've like, changed the circumstances. No. Okay, you try it with your like, pry bar. Nothing doing. Um, this isn't giving. I mean, it must be blocked from the inside. I mean, that makes sense, so... How how, uh, how good is it? Uh, like, is the... I suppose I could get the pry bar in, but are there any other, like... Is it's, this really well fitted? It's very well fitted. Effectively, you've had to like, try and not put the pry bar under one of like the metal reinforcements to see if you can like, lever one of them out to yeah. like, make it a bit easier to remove. But obviously, you're not strong enough to like prize the, the metal bar. I mean, if, if there's someone stronger who could like do it with the pry bar, maybe, but... Uh, uh, I... Look at someone stronger and hand him the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so because the circumstances have changed, you'll get to roll the feet of strength again, Gunto. Come on, Gunto. Gunto. Come on. Gunto. Oh. Gunto, that's up. Gunto fail. <laughs> and his face goes an alarming, like, shade yeah. of red purple, and then he's yeah. just like. <sighs> he almost faints. <laughs> as long as I gave it my all. Yeah, we're 110 percent. Mm -hmm. Um, John, are there any like? Because obviously there are trees in the clearing. Are there any trees in the area around the? the... Hey. There, there, there are a few like little sort of trees dotted about, yeah. Okay. Well, he's out looking at trees, and uh, <laughs> our, 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 our monk is out there, uh, you know, knocking all the 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 wall tiles. Mm -hmm. So when no one is looking. Aegis just gonna, you know, try to do a quick knock on the door. <laughs> okay, you knock on the door, it swings open. Hey, I got it open! Oh, for fuck's sake. Fucking hell. <sighs> Listen to the monk. So, everyone comes back, Guntox is carrying a tree. Yeah. How did you open that, Aegis? <laughs> yeah. like, like, out of commando. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll just kind of like chuck the tree down and be like, oh. It appears there was a secret <clears throat> mechanism. What, what was that, Edgar? Yeah. I don't know, a secret mechanism. It's, uh, it's, it was a button? It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, a, it's a mechanical thing. It it, it, it would, you wouldn't. I mean, it would be too complicated to understand, to explain it. Mm. Okay. I'll say to go to I bet it was a knock. <laughs> just keep walking. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> As you look in through the door, you can see what appears to be like a, a table and some chairs here. There is another door here, 
a staircase heading upwards here and a staircase heading downwards here. Um, I'll just uh, okay, hang on before you go in. Good, good. Oh, by yeah. the time you say, "What well, before you go in, good talk's already gone in. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's, the, here, here's the barbarian, so. Yeah. That's the thing. I'm doing my job. Yeah. <laughs> Meat shield. Okay, Guntok, as you walk in, <laughs> you see this room as I've just described it. And as you enter, a booming voice cries, Trespassers, you will find only death in the tower of the great necromancer Golgorak. At which Is... point, so obviously you, you all hear that outside, um, but before you have a chance to react, though, a huge skull materialises in front of Guntok. Its mouth is open and there are flames inside its mouth. As you're stood there, Guntok, it like zooms towards you, screaming with like flames and smoke trailing behind it, Ghost Rider styling. Hey. Oh, this is going crazy. Um, can I try and... Because I'm assuming it's firing at me. Yeah, it's coming straight towards you. Try and sidestep assuming that it's not going to change direction and try and hit it with my staff <laughs> batter yeah okay well make me a test not a feat of dexterity to see whether you can get out of the way in time mm -hmm. and obviously assuming you do you'll be able to make your attack Ah, don't worry about that. Okay, <laughs> you, you're getting ready to like, leap out of the way but you're not quick enough this skull hits you and it vanishes I'll just be kind of stood there, look. For a moment, though, the spot on your chest where it, like, disappeared feels briefly cold. I'll walk out and grab Baru. Uh -huh. uh, so I'll just walk out and grab you. I just kind of like, lift you up. A skull hit me in the chest and it disappeared. I feel cold. What's going on? It's probably some device of the master. Since you're still here with us, it's it's probably some sort of curse. But and I like I like, like push <laughs> I, I like push your like um, lips like apart to look at your gums and uh, like into your mouth. And I'm like I don't think it's we'll have to wait for a bit to see what happens. It doesn't seem like there's much of an immediate effect, so. I'll just kind of shove you towards the door and be like, you go in next. No, 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 <laughs> no. <laughs> so, John, a uh, point of order. Was the booming voice the voice of the master, or...? It, it didn't sound like the voice of Golgarak, no. Okay. It is his favorite. This is it in turn. Yeah, no, it's it's the, the guy with the, <laughs> the, the radio thing yeah. going like, radio this, this is, this is the, the, the master's tower. Is that him right now? <laughs> the message after the boom. Um, while, while they're debating uh, the final virtues of being hit with a necromantic spell, <clears throat> I'm gonna you can do your thing. move up here and uh, so I'm on. gonna Fall see if I can uh, spot Looking any cold chest. <laughs> spot any traps laying about. Okay, make your roll. Yeah, I rolled exactly what I shouldn't. So. Yeah. Okay, you have a quick look around. You don't see any traps. Okay, and over here was uh, like papers and shit. Yeah, it's like a desk with like papers on it and stuff like that. I'm gonna move over here. Okay, all of the. Okay, so can you speak the the language of Lankul? Um, well, I was gonna ask about that since. We we have common. Do yep. we also have our native language? Yep. And then we get whatever our bonuses. Yep. So, could I have been taught that by my friend Beryl? Yeah, it's fun. Are you cool with that, Beryl? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so as you're looking down at this jumble of papers that appear to be lying haphazardly on the desk, you can see they're written in a sort of spidery handwriting in Lancoran. And it appears to be, you know, some of it's like passing you by, it's obviously like written in a sort of a strange, uh, the phrasing's a little bit strange to you, but it appears to be talking about um, 
creating something and uh, it's like um, someone's been doing like an experiment and like they've failed a few times and they've crossed out bits and there's various formulas and as you turn a few over there's like some like anatomical diagrams of like humans and animals like drawn on some of the pages oh so basically what Barrow does when he's bored on a Friday night yep yeah <laughs> except much fancier yeah I'll take the papers and do, 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 do. Hey, take a look at this okay so AR hands his sheaf of papers over to you Barrow looking at it, it um, obviously you're somewhat familiar with the methodology of Gulgarak it appears that he was working on some form of like hybrid necromantic creature fusing like the corpses of men and animals together it looks as though he tried it a few times and the experiments hadn't worked and he's been like trying to recalculate and work out like his his figures and work out what went wrong with it but mm -hmm. you can't gain from these documents as whether he was like eventually successful or not they just like end abruptly sort of like it gets to the end they're like oh experiment 300 failure m may try alternate approach tomorrow mm -hmm. and then it stops there's no more what was the point to create like people with animal heads and and stuff like that or was it the point like i'm gonna sue like seven people and 16 pigs all together and make a horrifying undead monstrosity or the latter no. Who, who, okay. do, who do something horrible it, like that? It appears that um, Gorgorak, when he when he wrote these papers, was working on creating some sort of like necromantic golem or guardian for mm -hmm. the tower. But it, it seems as from the scribbled out bits, it seems as like he tried it a few times and it didn't really work out. So he like kept going back to the drawing board and trying to work out where it'd gone wrong. Okay, so uh, my old master was uh creating some combination of man and animal so if you encounter that sort of thing here uh i would say don't be afraid but maybe you should i'll, I'll be stood outside the door and i will like not coming in we're like is that what's going to happen to me N no hmm I'll like, <laughs> not, not if we survive this. I'll awkwardly step in the door and sh like shove Zonzo inside with me. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, he he might have done this thing or not. It, it's not clear. It, the notes don't say, but there there could be uh, a rather large uh, great. new servant. Yeah. Great. Okay. We'll see. I'll go here. Okay. Is this, uh, it, it's a normal wooden door. It's not like massively reinforced like the one outside. Alrighty, I do the thing. Check for traps. Oh, I find traps if there are. Okay, you don't find any traps on the door. Are there a normal keyhole and stuff? There is a normal keyhole to the door. Yep. Um. Well, at first I'll check if it's uh, unlocked. No, it's not. And I will attempt to unlock it. Go for it. Unlocking attempt successful. You were successful. Okay, so you, you get out like your lock picks, you fiddle around with it for a minute, and after a while there's a <coughs> the door is unlocked. Okay, um well I did my part and I'll step over here and uh, <laughs> wave Gondo. <laughs> Oh, Sansa, that's fine. Oh, whoever, yeah. whoever's the current meat shield is. I'll, I'll just kind of like walk over and kind of just glare at him. I walk in. Okay, as you walk to like you're standing just within inside the room, you see it looks like it must have once been a bed chamber of sorts, but like the whole area is covered in like dusts and webs. As you look around, you can see three figures lying on the floor, completely wrapped up in webbing. I know. Let's look back out. Looks like spiders. Um, do you want to exterminate some spiders? When when he says about spiders, John, I'll just kind of like reach in the door, but looking up above. Okay. 
as you sort of reach in the door and you will look up, you can see that the tall sort of vaulted ceiling of this chamber is like entirely crisscross with these like thick webs to the point where like you can't even really see like the top of the ceiling, there's that much webbing. Um, I will just walk, walk forwards and just pull the door shut. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> and just be like, no, no, <laughs> agreed, right. agreed, right. agreed. We we should probably check the uh, upstairs. Which way does the door open, John? Does it open out onto us, or it, it opens inwards? Uh, uh, just leave and be. Can I uh, get the desk and? Like go and slide the desk up against the door and just kind of absolutely flop fine flop it up against the door. Okay. Yep, you sort of make like a makeshift barricade out of the desk and like pile <laughs> up against the door. Not for me. Yeah, I'll just get the bookshelves, Gary. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's go upstairs. Okay, just give me a minute to uncover that part of the map, and then I will move you onto it. Upstairs, where there are no spiders. Hopefully. This is like this massive giant spider snake. Yeah, this, this, is, a, this <laughs> is a spider, spider snake. Spider snake in Sp Emporium. <laughs> All your spider snakes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so as you guys are walking up the stairs, you start smelling a, sort of a strange, pungent, almost spicy aroma, a little bit reminiscent of that, of the, the drinking establishment with the flavoured tobaccos and stuff like that. And as you're moving further up the stairs, you can hear these, you can hear these almost sexual sounds of like groaning and moaning coming from further up the stairs. They're running. I look at the room like they had a whole floor for this. <laughs> that, that, that's not what I expect. That's not okay. And I'll I'll just answer nonchalantly like yes, yes, of course. Are we are we running up in there and cut blocking or? Uh, I'll I'll head on. <laughs> yeah, but I'll yeah. Okay. I really want to walk, walk you, into whatever walking into. But, yeah. As you move up, Barry, you see it appears to open up into a large chamber, which pretty much takes up the entire room. The entire sort of like lower half of the room is blanketed in this thick fragrant smoke you can just about make out these silhouettes of these people writhing around engaged in physical relations with each other and these soft moans of pleasure coming from them standing in the center of the room is a a, a white bearded man wearing crimson robes who's sort of emerging from the smoke Is he familiar? Nope. I'll step in there. How do you expect it when a barrel's old boyfriends? <laughs> yeah, uh, emphasis on old. Yeah. As, you, as you step into the opening, rising out of the mist are three naked women, each of them holding platters laden with meat and fruit, the white bearded man turns towards you and he says, congratulations, you've penetrated where few of us have dreamed to gaze upon. My master admires strength and will greet you shortly. He reaches inside his robe, takes out a little silver bell and goes, ding -a ding -a ding -a ding -a. please, while you wait, relax and enjoy yourself. At which point these, these three sort of like naked women who are sort of like emerging from the mist so sort of beckon alluringly to you and hold out these platters in your direction Baru. do i know anything about this is this this uh, a feature that i know of it's, le it's legit <laughs> no th th this is no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a feature it's a bug yeah they they uh they had some upgrades then <laughs> <laughs> Not great, you, you would definitely have remembered the uh, pleasure dome. 
last time you remember Brew, when you were last on this floor, it was like a, an area that just literally had like a summoning circle in it that mm -hmm. your master used to like summon various entities and like communicate with them to gain eldritch knowledge from them. Mm -hmm. And there is no sign of the the circle anymore. You can't really see because, like, say, because of this yeah, thick like, mist. mist. Yeah. Is the big guy with us? Gun talk. I am. Um, gun talk will be just kind of like. Oh, sorry, I moved my. Yeah, probably on seeing the women in the platters, I initially just be like, mm, wait, wait, <laughs> <laughs> this might be magic trickery. Uh, okay, at this point, Guntok, can you make me a save versus sorcery? Move yourself <laughs> into the room somewhere, Guntok. I want some lady. I want some. Okay, so as you guys are like fighting off the urge to like throw yourself in there, Guntok's obviously had like a long hard like slog through it. he needs a bit of a release to like get some of this tension out he literally like runs into the room throws himself into the mist you hear like several gun talky like grunts of enjoyment from below the <laughs> mist and you lose sight of him as he disappears into the mist he dies now ah, we, we can see that chamberling right yeah, he appears to be quite tall, and he's, he's one of the few people standing up in the room. So you can see, like, his body, like, standing out of the mist as he stood there, which, like, his hands folded, doesn't appear to be moving. I, I'm going to throw a bowl at him. Okay. Go for it. So it appears to be 20 feet to him, yes? Yep. So that's minus something for range? Minus two? Oh, to his AC. I hit AC 8. Okay, you throw your bonus at him. As it whizzes through the air towards him, suddenly, like, with startling speed, he just, like, reaches out and, like, goes... and, like, plucks it out of the air. And he sort of looks at it with a sort of almost curious look on his face. It's a sex toy for where I'm from. Enjoy he laughs and he drops it into the mist at his feet. You see a feminine arm like reach out to the mist, grab hold of it, and then disappear back into the mist. And there are several groans. No, that cost money. Ah, <laughs> uh, he looks uh, to Barrow to get any idea what to do, and uh, walks up here. Okay. I'm going to run in, and I'll, I'm, I'm going to try and punch him. <laughs> okay, this guy gets throwing down. That, that's, that's, that's fine. Make me another save versus sorcery. Okay. Ah, damn it. Okay, Zon Zonzo sort of keep it up. runs in, desperate to like punch this guy. And as he's getting closer, a naked woman, looking extremely beautiful, rises out of the mist, kisses him passionately on the mouth, and that's in here is Zonzo sort of like murmuring in pleasure as he's like pulled down into the mist by this beautiful woman. Zonzo, come join me in the sex lounge. Yeah, that's it, man. In the bear sex lounge. Is it good in there? Sex lounge, indeed. Now it's got an aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> just, just don't uh, crush your swords. Now it's got mermaids. So that just leaves Baru stood on the edge of the room. Your two, your two friends getting amorous in the mist. And Aegor's gone, like, forget this, and just start like, walking up the stairs. Yeah, yeah, I'm going up as well. Okay, no problems. You walk up the stairs, leaving your two friends to their fate. And I think that's where uh, we're going to uh, end I the mean... session for this evening. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you very much for playing the game, guys. I hope you all yeah, enjoyed fun. it. Yeah, yeah was... good game, man. Mm -hmm. Okay, obviously I'm happy to chat for a bit, as always, after the session. But for now, thanks for anyone who's watching this in an hour in the future. Hopefully we'll catch you at the next session. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.